All right, there we see him looking through his pack. You see a Saltai Emissary, you see a Whisk Away, a Sandblast, Jeskai Sage. Sand you know, it takes a remarkable amount of self control to not just go peek at your rare. <laughs> I always do that. I, I am, always look at my rare I first. I am learning How, so much about Paulo Vitor Rosa <laughs> this weekend. How can you not? He still doesn't know that. No, but, but if you look, but if you minutes. look at the rare too quickly, you make it worse. Do you? Yes. Oh, he actually has a very interesting choice there. You know, Arcina of Depravity. I believe that's what yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, that is. Yeah, that I card haven't had is. a chance to play with that card yet, but. Oh, I, I have. Is that, it's an really good. is that an elite scale guard? It is elite scale guard. I, I think I take elite scale guard. Wow, they're both so good. I, you couldn't fault me for taking it here. I had a game against Shuhei in which I manifested Arcino Depravity and flipped it up at the end of his second May phase. He had to sacrifice six creatures. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow, this is <laughs> this is a tough, tough pick. Yeah, I mean, elite sky guard is easier to play, which is very relevant in a team draft where, you know, people could be. You, know, you could end up in a four-color deck, for example, but then those four-color decks are usually not and, as and aggressively Dave, focused. Dave, Dave really tanked on that. Yeah, he really he tanked did. That. That, and that, just to give you an idea, we talked a little bit about this. There's also a Valor stance in the pack. Yeah, and, you know, obviously not on the same level, but Send Blast is quite good. Yeah, we, we talked a little bit about that that idea of where did Elite Scale Guard, where does Team or Sabertooth rank in terms of, like, how far up do they go by the rails? Well, we see Dave Williams has maybe has that above Arch yeah. of Depravity. So there's a Dragon Bell Monk. Oh, an Abzan Sky Captain. So now, does he want to stay in white, or does he want to take what is, in my opinion, the, the better card, the, the Abzan Beastmaster? Oh, is there a Beastmaster in there, too? There is, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's hidden there. Oh, there it is. I, I mean, you kind of want, like, you know, you have that scale guard, you also kind of want to start getting tempted to be like going all in on plus one, plus one counters. Like yeah. the bolster mechanic. Yeah, no, they definitely work very well together. And you know, there is something to be said about just staying in the same colors, but I believe my pick would be the, the Beastmaster here. I think it's enough of a, you know, it's enough more powerful that it's worth moving into a second color. You know, it's still very early in the right. draft. And you don't want to give up this kind of power, but I also understand taking the flyer. I do not like taking the the bell. He, he took. He did. He did take the flyer. Okay. He took. He took Abzan Sky. Sky I believe that the, that card is significantly better than the two two vigilance power. Yeah. I was saying to look to the pack. I was saying to look to the middle. Yeah, I so, think. Thousand Gloom, collateral damage. This is a very easy dowsing glue for me here. Yeah, I think it's. I mean, if you're white, you want to be white black. Yeah, you, you have all the outlast creatures in black too. For sure, and it leaves you open to play both Abzan and Marduk. So being enemy colors is much better than being friendly colors in the right. in, in the construct. Yeah, and and that that seemed to be the the, the picks are getting easier for Dave here. Yeah. <laughs> He did well, that one. He got that one a little quicker. His first Although, pick oh, was very hard. Oh no, that's the that's not the one I. That's Justin Lyotis, I believe. No, no, the the black uh, creature. Oh yeah, it's not the Mardu. No, 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 no. It's, it's not the, the one. Leader. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so this pack is not good for Dave. Yeah, he's looking at. Uh, yeah, Ancestor of Rangers. I honestly don't think is a very playable card. Right. So I, I've had it a couple times before I decided to just never have it again. Yeah, but again, I guess. Yeah, you could take the it's land and go Asper. It's pretty. Or, it's pretty sweet if you think you're facing <laughs> off against rats. <laughs> yeah. He, he does take the ancestral vengeance. All right. I will be surprised if that up and ends up making his main deck. Right. So it looks like Dave has decided he's going to be black, white. Right? Yeah, which is, you know, a very good place to be. And also, he knows that the person next to him took uh, Arctina Arch of Depravity, or Arctina of Depravity. So he, he wants to be black. Right, he wants to cut that person out from being able to play that card. Yes, that, exactly. And, and that's very possible because the card costs double black. So it's much easier to cut them off of that than off of the Sky Guard. Right. Which, you know, could be one of the reasons, not Sky Guard, Scale Guard. Scale Guard. Yeah, yeah. It could be one of the reasons why he took it. Uh, I see a harsh sustenance in there, and that fits into the two colors of cards he's chosen already. It does, and that card is remarkably powerful. 
you know, the only thing that holds it back is the fact that it's two colors. But once you are ready those two colors, there are not a lot of comments you would take over it, I don't think. And there it goes. That's what he takes. Five picks in. Yeah. Looking good so far. I also remember there were multiple white cards in the pack he opened. There were, yeah. There right, was. So there's a chance something will come back around to him here. There is, yeah. You know, he, he's... Is that a... Typhoid Rats? No, the, the, the other one. A Meringue one? River Prowler. Yeah. Wow, that card is quite good, I think. That's pretty late for it to be yeah. there. It's just, I, I believe, better than everything else in this yeah. pack, but I don't think he can take it. And a, oh, so. he, he does take the Typhoid Rats there. He does, yeah. So Which, far, tournament MVP. I would have that on my number one card for oh, the yeah. top five cards from this weekend. Definitely oh, look, look at what came back around. Sandblast. So that's his opening pack. Yeah, There's a Sultai so Emissary and a Sandblast in his colors. Yeah, probably just taking Sandblast here. I think significantly better than Sultai Emissary, but wouldn't be upset to just, you know, be left with the Sultai Emissary here. And he's chewing on a right, toothpick. There, there was also a Valor stance. Yeah, that was, did not come back. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, you know, Neil Reeves not in the tournament anymore, but his toothpick remains. Yeah, I just want to <laughs> knock that off. <laughs> just slap it out of his mouth. It's like a mid-2000s thing from pro players. That was, <laughs> that was big. And the All Dragon right. Ball Monk came back around it too. It did, yeah. He almost took it the first time around, so he must be very, very happy to... You know, it's very rewarding when you're deciding between two cards, and then you reluctantly take one, and the other one comes back. Because you're like, <laughs> I'm, I'm a genius, you know, I took the right one. <laughs> that's perfect. Everyone else on this table was, was very foolish. So that's very a, a great feeling. Either that, or you have absolutely no idea which card is good right, or yeah, not. Right, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. It could be an awful feeling too, but in this case, I think it's a great feeling. So, Ob's on advantage, collateral damage. So the Mardu, uh... Is that looks like Mug Draggers? Is that what it's called? Or no, Mardu Shadow Spear. Yeah, Mar Mardu Shadow Spear, yeah. yeah. Tastigris Cruelty. Uh... Yeah, we actually had a very interesting pick where Luis Carvergas took Tastigris Cruelty over uh, the Rakshasha's uh, disdain. Oh, interesting. I believe it's what oh, it's yeah, called. Oh, yeah, there's sort of shots to sustain also. Yeah, and, and it was like second to last pick in his deck that could have sideboarded this thing. We've, we have seen uh, David Williams, Paul Rizzo, and Matt Sperling sideboard Rock Shots this thing. Yeah, Ab good Abs effects. Abzan Rune Mark is the pick there. Great Horn Crushock. Yep. No decks that can be a home for collateral damage. Oh, very hard. And you know, there, there are some decks in which you will play it. I mean, Paul Rizzo had two in his first soul deck. Yeah, yeah. And he comboed them with Factor Treason. But definitely not a card you want to splash most of the time. If you have, you know, enough Sultai Emissaries. Then... Oh, yeah. Thermal Krushak. Renowned Weapon Spiff. Teamers. Takes the renowned weapon smith and then uh, the formless uh, nurturing. Yep. So, how, how, do you, how do you like this after, after the end of pack one? I, I really it like it. Looks like he got a lot of cards that could all end up in his deck. Yeah, he, he definitely does. And you know, again, Black White is a great card. His mana right now is not great. He doesn't have any non basic lands, but he currently does not need them because he's straight Black White. Right. So you so, can just go, you can go 9, yeah. 8, 10, 7. Yeah, and if he does. Or, or, I mean, do you go 18 still? Or do you play 17? It depends on how, how much more Outlast you have. Sure. Uh, I would, in this moment, I would say I play 18 more often than 17, but 17 is definitely not out of the question. Yeah, and now if he picks up something like a Butcher of the Horde, then he can start looking for those lands. Right, right. right. So it looks like, it looks like uh, 10 playables out of his 15 picks. Wow, yeah, that's definitely I a mean, lot. I mean, there's certainly a couple that can easily be benched. Yeah, and Fate Reforge is, I think, has way less playables than Cause of Tarkir. Right. You know, the top end is better, the rares are better, but you have a lot of cards that are just not good. Not, so not having 10 playables is impressive. So, I knock Bonkin, uh, Throttle, Oh, that's almost um, Butcher of the Horde. Yeah, a Mardu Ascendancy and an Arc Lightning also in the pack of note. Card you're going to want to remember to go, hey, buddy, I oh, passed yeah. an Arc Lightning. For sure. 
that really does impact the way you play, knowing about that. Sure. I believe probably I'm not Bone King here, you know. I mean, he's got the arc lightning pretty far up in the pack. He does, yeah. I mean, is he thinking about playing it or about hate drafting it? I, it might, could be a hate draft. Like, the Bonkin might just come back to him. Yeah, but I, I don't think our lightning is good enough to hate draft. So, if he has no intention of playing it, I would just take the Bonkin, but apparently he disagrees. Yeah. He just doesn't want to face that card. It is very good against him, but it'll probably not get to his opponent. Well, there's a red black land for him. This will probably just be a school hunter, I imagine. Unless he's, you know, actually dedicated to their Arc Lightning. Or nothing I found is not that great not, of a splash not, card. Not a big fan of the Alabaster Cure in there. Uh, I do like the card, but I think in, in this kind of deck, you, you want your two drops, and I don't think he has any currently. Well, that takes the land. Yeah. So I, I, I guess decides to take a more controlish approach here, which is interesting to me. Because again, Arc Lightning is not the best splash card. Because you really want to cast it early to kill two creatures. And if you draw you know, your splash card on turn 9, then it's not that good. But yeah, I definitely understand where he's coming from. Certainly a much more powerful card. Uh, he, 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 good news, the toothpick went away. Bad news, he's got a fresh one. Yep. Oh yeah, and there's a Sultai Flare right there. Remember, those went really late, right? Yeah. Yeah, Luis actually has one that he's probably not playing, I think. Oh, not really much here for him. I mean, he can take the Right of the Serpent, but I don't think that's a card he's going to want to play in his deck. Yeah, it is better if you go for a more controllish approach, which seems to be what he's trying to go for. Okay. So uh, I think you could definitely end up seeing play. All right, so Right of the Serpent it is. Kill shot. Wow. Look, wow. Look at this pack. Ivory Tusk Fortress. This pack is fantastic. Yeah. Kill shot. Wooly locks it on. Uh, Pony Back Brigade. A land. Wow. Assault Room Patrol. Yeah. All, almost all of those cards are you know actively good. They're not just playable cards. They're cards you'd be happy to have in your deck. So which one is he going to take here? You know, I don't think he has the lens to support the Ivory Tusk Fortress right now. He, he does, as far as I can tell, he does not. But well, okay, that's not stopping him here. Yeah. So, once that card, or wants to take it away from the person he's passing to. So there's a Mardu Hate Blade. There's a Jess guy student. There's a. Uh, this guy, is that the Mardu? You think Mardu Hate Blade here? Uh, I think so. I, I like it better than Jess guy student. If yeah. You can't activate the ability. Which. We should be able to do. Yeah, it's not as good as Typhoid Rats, but you know, that's a high bar. <laughs> yeah. So there's a Defiant Strike. Could just eat a green creature here, or like incremental growth if you wanted. Yeah, I think I would just take the Krumar Bonkin here in his oh, spot. Oh, or the Krumar Bonkin, sure. Yeah, he's a bit, I think, short on, you know, just stuff to do early. And Defiant Strike is good if you're triggering prowess, but not that great if you're not. There so you yeah, I, I agree with his pick okay. there. Okay, there you go. There's a Mardu Ascendancy. Ooh, and a Throttle. Yeah, thr Throttle's the pick. I think so too, yeah. There's another Adozer. Ooh, and oh. the Marzo's Cool Hunter came back. I do think that is better than the Hate Blade. I, I, I would expect him to pick that. Especially since he already has one Hate Blade and one Rat. So he's pretty much covered for this type of effect. Sure. There we go. He does take the Skull Hunter. Yeah. So you guys are also... syncing up now. You guys are starting <laughs> to sync up. Yeah. Both of which are also make the Skull Hunter better because he has one drops. Right. Awaken the Bear. Is that a Villainous Wealth? Oh, it is. Isn't that a card you want to D up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and Villainous Wealth, I think, is the kind of card that you want to hate draft. Yeah. Because, you know, it's rarely good. But when it's good, it's very hard to beat. Like in the right matchup, the card is fantastic, and you just don't want your teammates facing that. Right. So.
Yeah, like if the draft had ended, if the draft ended right now, I would not wow, expect him to play Arc like this. Oh yeah. There's so much gas here for him. The kill shot and the pony back and the salt Road patrol, all of which are good in his deck. And you said the more controlling version, yeah. the salt Road patrol goes speaks to that, doesn't oh, it? Oh yeah, it does. It definitely does. And that's surprising to me over kill shot. I would expect, you know, kill shot salt Road patrol is better in the aggressive decks, but not very good there. Whereas kill shot, I think, is better in control decks, but actively good. But maybe, again, remember, he could be thinking about that elite scale guard. So he can slow oh, the game yeah. down, he can build up some outlast, he oh, can, yeah. and then drop the scale guard and, you know, get in with a couple of guys. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that does make sense. No, the card is definitely fine. Uh, I just like kill shot a little bit more. Sure. But I, I also understand, like, you know, he also has, he's playing black and has, you know, some removal already. So maybe just feels like he's short on creatures. Also has the harsh sustenance, so. And removal is kind of replaceable at this point. Like he has Throttle, Rider of the Serpent, Harsh Sustenance. So yeah, uh, uh, and Arc Lightning. Yeah, so. possibly. I mean, the, the Arc Lightning's almost a free splash room at this point. Oh, I he think has, he's got a couple lands. I believe he has one or... I think he has two. one Windscarred Crag, one Bloodfell Caves. Okay. No, just the, just the... No, it looks like he just has just the... Yeah, just, just the, the one. Just the caves. And you know, last thing's changed, I would just expect him not to play it. Yeah. And so does he, apparently, because that's yeah. not in his Yeah, he's just like, yeah, get that out of yeah. here. Well, he'd like to see a couple cards that start with the word chief. Yes. You know, or... Oh, yeah, those are so good. He even has, you know, a decent amount of warriors. And if he does have the ability to play the Ivory Chest Fortress, the ability is going to be pretty good because he does have some bolsters, some outlasts. And, you know, the card is solid by itself. 5-7 is no joke. Yeah, yeah. But if you can get the ability going, that's even better. All right. Here we go. It's pack three. I think I see a throttle. Three directions <laughs> he can go. Stay black, white. Go Obzon. I mean, not, not uh, yeah, Obzon yeah, yeah. or go uh, Mardu. Yeah, definitely. There's a skull Hunter. All right, not the rare he was hoping for. Wooded Foothills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this pack is actually quite underwhelming for him. The pick might just be Marduk Skull Hunter, though. I, it does seem that I like the card better than he does. Yeah, now it's interesting. He's trying to figure out who's gonna take what. Right. And you know that's why he's you know he's not gonna take those cards. He's just putting them in the order that he thinks they're gonna be picked. Right. So that he knows what people get and what's he gonna table from that pack. Right. Maybe get a Sage Eye Harrier back out of this pack. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't be. It is a warrior right now. He doesn't yeah. have any synergy with it, but he could yeah. pick that up. All right. There's a Russia battle. There he the is. The Stone Ancestor is kind of nice here. It is too. Oh, yeah. So salty. Oh, oh but yeah. Murderous Cut <laughs> is the clear pick. Oh, oh no. wow. Can he table that? He might be able to table yeah. You know what? He might be able to table that. He is going to table something good from that back because there are like five good cards yeah. for him. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's got to take the Murderous Cut. It's yeah. Also, there's a very decent chance that, you know, he's taking away Murderous Cut from the person he's passing to because he passed that Arc Fiend of Depravity. Oh, yeah. And, you know, that person could just not be black-white. Right. So, Murderous Cut is... Almost certainly not black-white, I yeah, guess. Yeah, but almost certainly black. Unless yeah. they just abandoned that card. Which I think is also possible. Yeah. Yeah, he does take the Murderous Cut there. Yeah, I think that's basically the clear pick here. <laughs> oh, there's another salt that Scavenger. There's another Raid of the Serpent. Yeah, so this coverage, I think, being just the better option here. Yeah. You know, he doesn't have many Delve cards. He has Murderous Cut, but that's not very Delve intensive. Right. So he can definitely afford another one. And, he, and he's got a lot of creatures. He's got creatures like the Hate Blade and the Typhoid Rats that sort of engage early. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, wow, that's a great pickup for him. Is there a, a, well, wow, look at this. Another pack might, with his own He's going to get two picks out of this pack as well. Yeah, no, that's definitely I mean, very good for his deck. You know, could be greedy to try to wield the gold card and hope that no one else is playing it because most absent decks cannot actually play that card. Yeah. Because they're base base green most right, of the time. Right, right, right. But I think there's a chance that this one would actually get hate drafted from him. Yes. So I think it's just better to just uh, pick it up. Look at that Obzon guide. Salt Road Patrol. 
Yeah, I think he should probably just abandon all pretense of playing red at this point. <laughs> or, or, or of green. I mean, he's got the jungle hollow towards the front of the pack here right he now. He does have that, yeah. And wow, he takes it. that. Okay. There's a valley there, yeah, sure not. Oh, there's disowned ancestor. Yeah, finally one that he can take. Yeah, yeah. Because oh, thankfully there's not three cards in this yeah. pack I want. Yeah, for sure. That would be good with his Mardu School Hunters and also with any Warrior Seniors he has. Just a good card in general. You know, his pack came back and it had nothing for him to begin yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, no, this so. was... This was, a, this was a, now, now you take the Wooded Foothills. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you do keep what you draft. Oh, actually, he's going to take the Barrage of Oh, yeah, that's actually a better pick. That card's... Yeah, that card is potentially very good. Just don't want to, you know, give... I think that's Pochio on his left. Free access to that card. Yeah. And again, it might be a card that, you know, he could splash as yeah. a sideboard card, depending on, or even as a main deck card, as we've talked about. Like, when they sort of suss out and they're like, yeah, no, two Ponyback Brigades and a, you know, a, uh, you know, a Hordling Outburst and this and that. And he's like, oh, you know what? I'm going to build my deck with these two red sources, another mountain, and something else. I'm going to play this Barrage of Boulders, right? Like, he can just make that decision. Yeah, and I mean, he does have the Arc Lightning, too. So, if he wants to bring uh, red so in, look. Uh, that came back. Wow. Yeah, so he's probably going to get a rush of battle in the next pack. The the next time this, this the good pack wow. came for him, which I think is two packs from now. So we, we said he needs something that starts with Chief coming into this third pack. Yeah, he found he, two. Why does he take here? Venerable Lamasu is, you know, a playable sideboard card but definitely not one he would want in his main deck so it might be better just to take something away from his opponents i was thinking about taking the abomination of gadul out yeah, yeah i mean that is the better card but it's also the least likely to be played from his opponents oh, oh the russia battle did not come back but disowned ancestor did yeah it did and again that card's terrific in his deck it is it is very good He don't let someone just get a free yeah, secret, secret plan. Yeah. I don't think Pochu is much into secret plan shenanigans. You know, that's more yeah. like LSVs and Eric Frolix Alley, but Chewie is more business-like than them, but yeah, no need to just pass that for free. 